Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the Emax GT2826. This is an 860 kV brushless motor and I got it from Aloft Hobbies. Well, I have the next motor for my next project, and I'm not ready to reveal the next project yet, but I did put a little teaser in the community tab, so if you haven't checked that out, take a look. Maybe you can uh, put in your two cents on what you think the next project's going to be. In the meanwhile, I'd like to get this Emax GT2826 on the judge and test it out. Ideally, I'll see around 3,000 grams of thrust on this motor, and I'd like to see something north of 700 to 750 watts. I think if I get there, I'll be content with the performance of this motor for the next plane. I've used Emax brushless motors on a number of different airplanes and honestly they're like one of the best kept secrets out there and one of the main challenges with Emax is getting data. They, you've heard me complain in the past about lack of data and if it weren't for Aloft Hobby publishing the specs on their website it's very challenging to find information about these motors. Not only that, they don't do a very good job maintaining stock levels in the US so it's almost like hunting rabbits. You, you, have to, you have to be stealthy, you have to pay attention, and you have to strike when the opportunity presents itself. Fortunately for my next project, this motor looks like it fits the bill, and the big benefit is that 26 bucks. This is a $26 motor, and they're very high quality. You would never, if, if I didn't tell you that, you'd never guess it by looking at the motor. Their bearings are very good, their packaging is very nice, they, they have a very complete kit, so they've got the compression fitting, they've got the screw-on prop adapter, of course a bag of screws with bullet connectors, and the radio mount. So they send you everything you need to mount this motor, and you can mount it as a forward mount motor, so you can screw in the front, use your compression collet, and, and use the base as the mounting piece, or you can rear mount it and put the prop adapter up front on here, and it spins like a rear mounted motor with the shaft protruding out the back. And you don't have to take the can apart to do it, so it works either way, which is really nice. The wires are a nice silicone and they're flexible, so they, they bend and the boot going into the can is nice and secure. As far as the windings go, that may look like skipping, but it's not. It's the wire wrap that comes out for one of the leads. So when you look at the windings closely, they look like they're wound very tight with very little overlap or skipping on the pole. So that looks very good. The outside of the can is very nice. It's a matte black with a Grand Turbo logo and the GT2826 specification. This is a slash 05. Everything on this motor looks well done. I don't see any issues with machining. Everything is nice and smooth. And look, they even have some veins on the back that help pull air into the motor. There is an E-clip up front, so if you forward mount this, one thing I've learned by messing around with these, if you're going to forward mount it, you can take that E-clip off, especially if that clip is going to press against the rear of your firewall. So if, that, if you do that, it can create some tension. But the reason you can take that clip off if you do a forward mount is because the can, the energy is being pulled in and the can cannot come off. So it is safe to take that E-clip off and you might need to if your prop shaft hole is not doesn't have sufficient diameter to accommodate that E-clip when it's spinning. Ask me how I know. All right, there's the compression collet. It's got the compression piece, a nice heavy washer, and of course the matching nut. One thing I noticed and I'm not sure about is they give two different diameters for the compression fitting and the prop adapter. I'm really not sure why they do that. So if you want to use the compression fitting, the diameter is eight millimeters, 7.9, but that's, that's eight. And then if you want to use the prop adapter, it is a six millimeter shaft. So that's a little odd. I don't know why they, why they make them different, but for my tests, because I'm going to be using an APC prop and I don't want to hog it out to that eight millimeter size, I'm just going to go ahead and stick the prop adapter on and, and use it the way it sits. That way, if I decide I want to use a different prop, I can do that and I haven't damaged the prop or hogged it out just for this arrangement. All right, that's enough for the first look. I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted up on the judge and let's spin a prop and see what it does. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with these Emax motors and why they don't have more of a following and why they don't produce more and get more stock in the U.S. because they're really good. I've had 
great success with them. I remember putting one on one plane and I couldn't believe the amount of power the thing made. I mean, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't ready for it, to be honest. I'm also, you'll notice I'm not gonna use thread locker right now because I don't know for sure which way I'm gonna mount this. So more to come on that later, but for now, it's just a test, so I don't think I need to worry about the thread locker just yet. If I do mount it with the prop adapter up front, I will take these screws out and put thread locker back in because that's just one of those things you don't mess around with. I'll tell you another thing about these Emax motors. I don't think you can beat them in a competition of value. I just, I just don't think they can be beat. Okay, I've got the Emax GT2826 mounted up on the judge and ready to spin. I'm going to plug a battery in and check the KV real quick. I also need to make sure it's spinning the right direction because normally it's not. How about that? That time it is. Okay, I'm just going to run it up and get the KV measurement real fast. Okay, I saw 994 kV, and as I've mentioned in the past, this one seems to read about 100 kV high. So that fits because it's an 860 kV motor. So that's typical for my test stand. All right, let's get the prop on and spin it. One thing I didn't show in the first looks portion of the video is that they give you two washers, and each washer has a smooth side and a side with some teeth cut into it, which is really nice because when you're tightening your prop, especially on a compression fitting, having those teeth be able to bite into the prop is very helpful, making sure that compression collet actually grabs the shaft. Okay, so remember, I'm looking for something north of about 2,500 grams of thrust, and I'd like to see something north of about 750 watts. If I can get there, I'll be happy with the performance on the airplane that this is going on. And just to give you a look real quick at the book. Okay, so here's a quick look at the book. And what they're showing here is max amperage of 51 amps on a four cell with the 860 kV, which is what I've got, and a 14.7 prop, which is what I've got. So I'm looking again for something north, hopefully of 2,500 grams and somewhere around 750 to 800 watts. That's the goal. This is not a brand new battery. Normally I do brand new batteries for these tests, but this case it's not. It's, it's not bad, but I can feel it's got a little bit of swelling on the side, but it's not terrible. I do have another battery on the charger. If I don't get what I want, I'm gonna go ahead and use a brand new battery, but I do have another four cell over there on the charger spooling up. Okay, before we go, I just wanna get a temperature reading on the motor real quick. Okay, I'm seeing about 86 degrees, which is, which is about right because it's hot, hot. All right, I'm gonna spin it up and listen for vibrations if I don't hear any. Then I'm going to finish going. I'll be looking for thrust and RPM, and we'll get the rest of the data after I spin the prop down. Goggles. Okay, here we go. Let's listen for vibrations, and then we'll spin it up and look for the numbers. Oh, that feels so good. I can't even tell you, but perfectly balanced. I don't hear anything. So I'm going to go ahead and gun it. All right. That was awesome because I saw 3,700 grams of thrust. I saw 828 watts of power. 57.29 amps and 14.47 on the volt sag. Well, <laughs> this is QED. All right, I didn't get the RPM, so I want to run it a little bit longer and get the RPM off of it. And I also want to run it for about 20, 30 seconds so I can take a temperature reading.
All right. All right, so that got a little warm, 154. But I can still hold on to it, so it's not terrible. I think that's about the limit, though. Actually, this prop to me tells me right now that, that it's right at the peak. I, I think that uh, this is a 14.7. The plane I'm going to be flying it on says a 13.8 or a 13.65 is a good prop. And honestly, I think that's probably what I'm going to go find. I, don't, I know I don't have one of those in stock, so I'm going to have to order that. But I definitely get the feeling that a 13.65, 13.7 wood prop would make a lot of sense for this setup. So with that, uh, I got RPM at 93.65. I also watched the thrust at static, and I saw it hovering around 32 and change. We'll call it 32.20. So strong thrust numbers. The watts are there. I'm thrilled with that. Let me do some math for you guys, and then we'll wrap up the video. OK, for efficiency, I used thrust divided by watts. So the peak thrust that I saw was north of 3,700. So I'm just going to use 3,700. And then the watts, I hit peak. 828. So 4.47 to 1 on efficiency. Let's take a look back here. I think that sounds really good. Oh yeah, how about that? Interesting. The PA thrust 50, same efficiency. So we're right in there. And you guys remember I commented that here's the sunny sky numbers, 3.17, 3.74. Those are the high numbers on sunny sky and I thought that was efficient. The thrust came in at 4.78 and this Emax came in at 4.47. So from an efficiency standpoint, if you want to compare thrust over watts, so I took thrust at 3,700 grams divided by a peak wattage of 828, I get 4.47 to one, which is solid. Now I want to do the weight on this motor is 175 grams. And the power to weight, the last time I did this, there was some discussion about power to weight. We really want to use the airframe power to weight but since I don't necessarily have the airframe built or selected, or I don't know what you're going to use, I wanted to give a power to weight reference number that you could use for the motors themselves. Okay, so that's why I include a power to weight ratio for the uh, motor based on the wattage. So in this case, we had 828 watts. So 828 watts divided by 175 grams. That gives me a four. 0.73 to 1 power to weight ratio. Dollars per watt, 26.35 divided by 828. Look at this, 0 0.03. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This motor fits the Emax GT model. It looks good, it sounds good, it produces north of what they said it would produce. It produced Look, I'll get the book out and I'll show you. You don't have to listen to me. Let me show you. And this is what I'm talking about. This is, this is why I do these tests. <laughs> because, okay, so their books, hey, let's unplug that. Okay, so the book says a 4S battery, and this is a used 4S. This is not a brand new 4S. A 4S battery, with a 14 by 7 APC prop, which is exactly what I'm spinning, 7,600 RPM, I hit 9,300 RPM. So I exceeded their test data. And 41, 51 amps at peak, I hit 57, so about six amps high. That's about 10% high. But the thrust, they say, is 2,500 grams, and I hit 37. I mean, they need to revamp their test data, but you can't, you can't go back to them and say, well, you, you didn't deliver what you said you'd deliver. They absolutely did. They gave more. The motor produced more than what they said it would do. And this is why I do this work. The other thing I want to point out is for that price point, 26 bucks, I challenge somebody, somebody out there, any one of you guys, show me that you can beat that. Show me that you can beat the dollar per watt, come up with that efficiency number and that power development at a cheaper price with the same quality. This is good quality bearings. It spins true. It's got the front and rear mounts. You guys, I'm telling you, these Emax motors, if you're not familiar with them, you should get yourself familiar with them. These are the types of companies you want to support because they're putting out a product that's priced aggressively and it's high quality and it's functional. So I'm very pleased with the results today. I hope you guys appreciated the information that I put out. If you did, your subscription is valuable to me. It helps the channel grow. Small channels like mine need subscribers so we can keep continue to grow and get video placement because the more subscribers we have, the more our videos get placed in front of other eyeballs. 
And that's what helps the channel grow. So I appreciate it if you consider subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who've been with me for a while, please keep the comments coming. I definitely would appreciate a thumbs up, thumbs down, comment, share. You know the drill. That's all I've got for today, guys. Take it easy. Okay, the compression collet. I normally don't make a show of, of, yeah. Okay, remember, we're looking for something north of about 700. Let me get my book out here. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This motor fits the, the G-Max 